We just spent the past two days staying on Fort Myers Beach for our Memorial Day weekend. And in this episode, we're gonna show you what it's like eight months after Hurricane Ian. Welcome back to Explorcation. We're Jamie and Skylar, and we're here to show you all around this seven mile island. From the pier all the way down to Lover's Key, we'll show you the restaurants, the beaches, the shops, the nightlife, and the overall condition of the island. And while not the same bustling beach town it was prior to Ian, you may be surprised to see just how far this resilient community has come. And we're gonna show you starting right now. Good morning, guys. We got into Fort Myers Beach last night just in time to catch sunset, grab some tacos, and drop by Walmart to pick up some coffee and beer because although the Publix on Fort Myers Beach is now open, it does close early, whereas the Walmart just off the island stays open till 11. We woke up early to enjoy this rental house, which we are gonna give you a full tour of later in this video. But for now, we gotta get ready for the beach. And while we do that, we're gonna show you some footage from Yo Taco last night but not before a relaxing cup of coffee by the pool. Or maybe not. Our Friday night taco spot took us just a short walk from our rental, and in case you can't tell, I was excited for some tacos. Located right across the street from the Lanakai Island Resort, Yo Taco has been a Fort Myers Beach staple since 2010. And while their brick and mortar location was completely destroyed by Hurricane Ian, they continue to serve up tacos, burritos, and quesadillas out of this eye-catching food trailer. Oh, well, that was fast. Oh, that's good. Ready to eat? Yeah. We were more than happy to dine outside in this tropical, tiki-themed patio where we could feel the cool breeze blowing off of the gulf just a few hundred feet away. We decided to order the shredded chicken taco and the steak taco salad. There's more steak and guac in that salad than salad itself, so definitely my type of salad. Both of our orders absolutely hit the spot, especially when topped with Yo Taco's fantastic house hot sauce. But we both agreed that on our next visit, we'll have to try the Big Donkey Burrito. After starting our day off by the pool, it was time to hit the beach. And our first beach stop took us just a short walk from our beach rental, where you'll find Beach Access 31. Now we only had to walk about two blocks to get to the beach and the first impressions here are that this beach is gorgeous. The water is really clear and it's also very calm today and the beach itself is not very busy at all. This is probably the least busy Fort Myers Beach has ever been on Memorial Day weekend. If you're someone that loves Florida's beaches but tends to avoid them on the weekends due to the crowds, this is actually a great opportunity for you to get out on a gorgeous beach when it's not really busy. Now they are obviously still in the rebuilding phase here, so there will be sections of the beach like this one where you'll be dealing with some construction noise, but there's also sections that are nice and peaceful. Most of the businesses on this area of Fort Myers Beach were completely wiped out with the hurricane, but some of them have been extremely resilient and have reopened even though they don't even have a building. We're gonna show you one of those establishments right now. And because we can never get enough good coffee, our second stop of the day takes us to 1740 Estero Boulevard, where you'll find Mojo's Coffee Cafe. Like Yo Taco, Mojo's brick and mortar location was completely destroyed by Ian. And while they are determined to build back, for now, in its place, it's the Mojo's food truck. Despite losing their building, we found that Mojo's still offers a good selection of coffee drinks, plus smoothies, teas, and some breakfast and lunch items. We got a giant iced French vanilla latte. So we really lucked out with the weather today. It's super comfortable out here and we really enjoyed having our coffee out in the open air. Now right next to this coffee trailer is actually a souvenir shop slash hardware store trailer and a beach bar trailer and we're going to show you both of them. We have to admit, we initially thought the souvenir and hardware store combination seemed a little odd, but we soon discovered that this little shop was pretty awesome. In addition to reasonably priced souvenirs and beach gear, they also offer cold drinks, sunscreen, plus pretty much everything you'd expect to find in a hardware store. And if you need a good reminder of what Ian can go do, you can find that here too. 
Now the store that I just bought my hat and glasses at used to operate across the street, but it was destroyed by Ian and their trailer just opened about three weeks ago and it sounds like they are planning to rebuild. Our next beach trailer stop was one that Skylar was particularly excited for and took us just a few steps away to the beach bar. We soon found that they offer a good selection of reasonably priced drinks, plus a lot of shaded seating located right on the beach. All right, so change of plans. We did go to the beach bar, but when we got there, we found out they're gonna have a live full band playing there later this afternoon. So we decided to go grab lunch and check out the beach bar a little later. Our lunch destination takes us around six miles southeast all the way to Lover's Key. And along the way, we're gonna show you some footage from the drive. If you're not interested in seeing our drive down Estero Boulevard and would prefer to meet us at a lunch spot on the water, then go ahead and skip forward to the six minute, 23 second mark right now. But if you are interested in Fort Myers Beach driving footage and would like to see more of it, let us know in the comments. While we don't typically post primarily driving videos on this channel, we do have footage driving up and down the entire island and would love to share it if it's something you all would like to see. After around a 12 minute drive, we crossed over the Big Carlos Pass Bridge onto Lover's Key, where at 8767 Estero Boulevard, you'll find flippers. As we expected for a Saturday around noon on Memorial Day weekend, Flippers was a very popular place to be, but we were still lucky enough to be immediately seated at a table with fantastic views of Estero Bay. This is by far the busiest place we've been to so far. It's got a great view of the water. While we certainly were impressed with the views, we were hoping the food would be even better, and based on the reviews of this place, we had pretty high expectations. We found the drink menu to offer a good selection of specialty cocktails, wines, and a few local beers, while the food menu was highlighted by a number of fresh seafood dishes and even some all-day breakfast options. So I'm going with the black and blue chicken and shrimp salad. And Skylar is gonna do either the tuna ceviche or the campanchana, because we've never, we've never heard of that before. And the beer that Skylar ordered is an ale from Bonehook Brewing. How is it? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, refreshing. After a few quick minutes relaxing on the open air patio, our food had arrived looking absolutely fantastic. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and let us know what your favorite Fort Myers Beach dining spot is in the comments. So this is our first time trying Campanchana and it looks really good. And they said that this was like a tomato base. I wasn't sure how much I would like it, but it is full of seafood and it's really good. Mm. It's totally different from ceviche, right? But also very good. Different, but the same. <laughs> oh man, that is good. I'm still not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but if you ever see Campanchana on a menu, I definitely suggest ordering it. While the Campanchana was nothing short of amazing, this black and blue chicken and shrimp salad looked pretty delicious as well. Okay, so this salad has chicken and blackened shrimp, blue cheese, and a balsamic vinaigrette. Oh, that is so good. The blackened flavor is perfect. Oh yeah, that salad is excellent. I really like the flavor of the balsamic vinaigrette along with the blackened flavor and the blue cheese. Another tip for dining at Flippers, if you order fish, shrimp, or even chicken, get it blackened because their blackened seasoning is amazing. With a fantastic lunch behind us, we're gonna take you back up the island for a tour of our rental house. And while we're driving back to the Northwest, we want to mention that around halfway up the island is where you'll find the only grocery store on Fort Myers Beach, Publix. And during our visit to Fort Myers Beach, this Publix had just reopened two days prior on May 25th. We can confirm that this Publix looks great and does offer both of the things that we love the most about Publix. It's fresh baked goods and the always delicious and affordable pub sub. Now that we've shown you where to grab your groceries on the island, it's time to show you where you may just want to stay. Welcome to Casa del Sol Breeze, our home here in Fort Myers Beach for the weekend. 
This is a three bed, two bath, Mediterranean style home. It has its own private pool and it's located just a couple blocks from the beach. Now, when you enter the home, you'll find a bedroom and a bathroom to the right. This bedroom has beachy decor and also a really nice calm feel to it. I personally love these pillows that have the embroidered seashells. I also really love that they have a ceiling fan in here. That is something you're gonna find in all the bedrooms in this house. I know a lot of people have a hard time sleeping without a fan, so that is a really nice feature. Now next to this bedroom, you will find one of the bathrooms. Now there are a few things that I like about this bathroom. The first being the shower. It is very spacious and I also noticed that you can control it over here, which means that you don't have to get wet while you're adjusting the temperature. I also really like that there's a ton of natural light coming in and also the vanity area. You're gonna find this really high-end granite that you'll also find in the kitchen. On the way to the kitchen and living room, you will find a good size washer and dryer and also the master bedroom. The master bedroom has a nice warm feel to it. It's got a king size bed with a really soft mattress. And once again, I am a fan of the pillow choices. It also has a TV and a walk-in closet. Now, if you don't think that this is enough space, it actually has a second walk-in closet across the hall. Now, just past the walk-in closets, you will find the master bathroom, which has some really nice features. It offers a separate area for the toilet and also dual vanities, along with a good amount of storage for your personal items. But I think the best feature is probably the shower. It offers six shower heads, a ton of space, and even more natural light. Now that you've seen the master bedroom, let's go check out the kitchen. Now the kitchen opens up into the living and dining space as well. The whole area has really tall ceilings and has a nice light and bright feel to it. But just focusing on the kitchen, it has more of this really cool granite. You'll also find a full set of stainless steel appliances, including a wine fridge, along with a coffee pot, Keurig machine, and a toaster. I also wanna point out that these bar stools are quite comfortable, and I really like the looks of this farmhouse style dining table. Next to the dining table, you will find the third bedroom. It is the smallest of the three and would be really good for kids. It's got a couple small beds in it, a cute turtle theme, and also a TV. Next to the kitchen and dining area, you will find the very spacious living area. It does include comfortable reclining leather seating, a nice sized TV, and also two ceiling fans. Next to the living area, you will find the balcony, which does provide some good outdoor space, but by far, you are gonna find the best outdoor space in this property downstairs. Now, the lower level of this property has to be our favorite because this is where all of the fun happens. They have what we like to call a beer fridge, as well as a pool table, foosball table, and a whole other living space. But this is also where the pool is. This pool is feeling really nice right now, and it's very tempting to just stay here for the rest of the afternoon, but we really wanna make it back to the beach for that live music. So we're gonna show you a few more shots from this wonderful rental property, and then we'll meet you at the beach. We have to take a moment to give a big thank you to Sun Palace Vacations and the owner of Casa del Sol Breeze for hosting us during our two days in Fort Myers. If you'd like to book this custom-built beach home for your own Fort Myers beach vacation, go ahead and visit sunpalacevacationhomes.com. We'll also include a link to this property in the video description. And if you'd like to see what other rental properties are available on Fort Myers Beach, they currently have almost 70 properties available to rent, with many more to come in the near future. So we did make it to the beach bar in time to catch the last hour or so of that band and we're so glad we did. Even though they don't have an actual building anymore, a ton of people showed up, the band was really good, and the beach got pretty busy as well. But now we're back at the house to grab our car and we'll meet you at our dinner spot. Having just had its grand reopening after being closed for eight months after Ian, the Yucatan beach stand hasn't missed a beat. Whether outside or inside, we found the Yucatan to be full of character and chill island vibes. We were happy to find seating in the open air but out of the sun and couldn't wait to order some food. Yucatan's menu includes seafood, pastas, burgers, sandwiches, and baskets, plus some specialty cocktails and frozen concoctions. We started our order off with a strawberry swirl, a frozen strawberry and mango daiquiri made with real fruit and dragonberry rum. We both agreed that this was the best drink of the weekend, and at under 10 bucks, it was reasonably priced as well. 
Next up was our food, which included a patty melt for me and beef pot roast for Skylar. We both found the pot roast to be tender and quite flavorful, but this time my order was the winner as we both loved the patty melt. Yucatan is located just a couple blocks from the pier and the main beach access, and is open for lunch and dinner daily. Stuffed and exhausted, we made our way back out to the beach by our rental house in hopes of catching a great sunset, and boy, we were not disappointed. While Ian had no doubt done a number on Fort Myers Beach, our first full day on the island had been a great one, and this sunset on the beach was one of the most beautiful we'd seen. And just as we were about to call it a day, we heard some live music in the distance and decided we had one last stop in us before bed. We followed the music about a half mile up the beach and across the road to the whale, where once again, the lack of a building wasn't keeping a business down. In fact, seeing the locals out dancing in the moonlight and having a blast despite all they've endured was one of the coolest things we've experienced in quite some time. We began our second full day on Fort Myers Beach by heading back towards the south end of the island in hopes of finding a nice, not-so-touristy section of beach to soak up the morning sun. We knew that there were several public beach accesses near the central and southern portions of the island, but had no idea if any of them would be open. The drive down the island was a perfect representation of the state of Fort Myers Beach, as some of it looks great and some has a long way to go. It wasn't the least bit uncommon to see a pristine looking multi-million dollar beach house sitting next to a pile of rubble or a totally vacant lot. And we couldn't help but imagine what this island will look like a few years from now when the empty lots and piles of rubble are replaced with brand new structures built to withstand the strongest of hurricanes. We decided we'd try to access the beach on the south end of the island as far as possible from the more touristy northern section of Fort Myers Beach. Our first stop was at Public Beach Access 12, located right off the end of Gulf Drive. We initially thought we had found a great spot to park at this access, but we soon discovered that all the vehicles on the south side had parking tickets. They are still enforcing parking, so make sure that you're in an area that has a parking sign, and usually there is something you can scan to pay the hourly rate. But because we wanted to at least see what the beach looked like at Access 12, Skylar dropped me off to explore. The access to the beach was gorgeous and free of debris, and the beach itself looked amazing and was totally free of crowds. And with a very limited amount of public parking at Beach Access 12, we doubt this section of beach ever gets too crowded, even on the busiest of beach days. After a brief walk to the beach at Access 12, Skylar picked me up and we made our way further south to check out a beach spot we'd noticed the day prior on our drive to Flippers. This took us back across the Big Carlos Pass Bridge, where at the far north end of Lover's Key, you'll find the Lover's Key State Beach Park, which has a beautiful stretch of beach along the Big Carlos Pass. But we soon discovered that we'd struck out at this spot as well, as both the state park and the beach access remained closed due to Hurricane Ian. Determined to find parking and spend some time together on the beach, we made our way back up the island to beach access number 11, which piqued our curiosity due to its location right by this extra wide section of beach. Unfortunately, the parking situation at beach access number 11 was similar to beach access number 12, with only enough spots for five or six vehicles, all of which were occupied. I'm hanging out in the car while Skylar checks out some of the beach areas on the southern end of the island. There is not a lot of beach parking, and we are finding that if cars are parked in areas where you can't actually pay for beach parking, they're getting tickets. Similar to the other public accesses we visited, the parking rate was $5 per hour and can be paid via credit card by scanning a barcode on your cell phone. Near this beach access, we found a good example of a house that was heavily damaged but seemingly not destroyed, unlike many of the other structures built before 2002. The path to Beach Access 11 was a little bit longer, but just like Beach Access 12 to the northwest, this stretch of beach was beautiful and even more empty, as many of the condos that line this stretch of beach remained closed. 
After three failed attempts to find a good morning beach spot, we were still determined to get in some time on the beach, but by now it was almost noon and I was getting hungry. And that led us back up the island to another spot that was knocked down by Ian, but is far from out. We arrived at 2450 Estero Boulevard to find Mom's Home Cooking to be operating out of a food trailer. But by now, we had really grown to love these outdoor dining experiences and would have probably even been a bit disappointed if we would have had to eat inside. We'd heard some rave reviews about the breakfast at Mom's, but found that they offer a few different lunch options as well. But on this day, we were having breakfast for lunch and we couldn't have been much more excited to try it. So what did you get us? We got a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich on a biscuit, and a cinnamon oh roll. Oh my gosh, that looks amazing. It does. So the cinnamon on the outside is kind of crispy, but it's not dry at all. It's really soft. It tastes like it's fresh out of the oven. It is good. This biscuit sandwich is huge, so I'm kind of glad we only got one. Yeah, this place is known for their biscuits, I think. The biscuit is excellent, and the bacon, the bacon flavor is really good. We both agreed the biscuit sandwich was one of the best things that we'd eaten on our trip, along with confechana from the day prior at Flippers. While Mom's does plan to eventually rebuild, we're pretty sure that their current setup will not leave you disappointed. By this point, we'd pretty much given up on finding beach parking towards the south side of the island, so we decided to make our way back to the north side of the island instead, in hopes that the $3 per hour lot we'd found the day prior just might have some open parking. We quickly found that the Times Square area of Fort Myers Beach was much busier than the day Day prior, but to our surprise, several $3 per hour parking spots were available in the lot just to the north of the Yucatan. As we made the short walk down to the beach, we found a few businesses, such as the Yucatan and this beach shop, to be back to normal, while others looked just as we imagined they had looked immediately after Ian. Down by the pier, we found many more businesses operating out of trailers, and a few which were back to operating out of their original brick and mortar structures. We were especially impressed with La Ola Surfside Restaurant, which is now operating out of two modified shipping containers, equipped with a good-sized bar, restroom, and patio. But it was our visit to the Fort Myers Beach Chamber of Commerce trailer that we'll remember the most. Not only did they have one of the best decorated trailers we've ever seen, but it was here that we saw the side-by-side -side pictures of Times Square before and after Ian. So here we have a picture of what this area of Fort Myers Beach looked like pre-Ian. You see the pier right here. Now compare that to these pictures. These were taken a month after Ian. Even though this place still looks pretty rough, it has come a long ways. While it took us about four hours longer than we had anticipated, we were finally ready to relax on the beach. And since the beach right by the pier was quite busy as expected, we decided we'd just walk up the beach until it wasn't. Along the beach, we came across this mobile ice cream stand, which sold a variety of frozen treats and also $2 bottles of water. We have made it back to the beach, but today has not quite gone as expected. So yesterday, the island was not busy at all, and we kind of expected the same for today. So we really took our time when we were checking out of our rental and we were in no hurry at all to get back to the beach but we probably should have been because it is much busier today. We actually talked to some Chamber of Commerce volunteers and they said that today is probably the busiest day this island has seen since Hurricane Ian. So it's especially busy in the area here around the pier and we didn't even know if we'd be able to find parking but we did find a lot that had open spots at just $3 per hour, which we thought was a really good deal, considering we saw most of the lots around here charging $5 an hour or $15 to $20 for the entire day. Now, when we did get out to the beach by the pier, it was really packed, but we only had to walk a couple hundred feet up the beach to find a nice open area for ourselves. Having finally found a beautiful and fairly empty section of beach to enjoy, the only thing left to do was get in the water. <laughs> Oh, that's got to feel good. It is really hot out today. I think I'm going to have to go join him. <laughs> we found this section of beach to be a great spot for relaxing in the Gulf, as we were both able to walk out quite a ways into the water before it reached shoulder high. After an hour or so on the beach, we'd had enough sun, and we decided to make the walk back to the pier, where one of the businesses had caught my eye. And that business was an ice cream shop, which offers over 20 different flavors of Wisconsin-made ice cream. We decided to go with the Fat Elvis, and this just got serious, both of which were cold and creamy and the perfect way to cool down after a hot day in the sun. 
While the ice cream did cool us down a bit, we were still ready to find some AC, and that led us to the shipwreck just across the street from the Yucatan. We found this shop to offer all sorts of souvenirs, clothes, and beach gear in addition to some cold AC, and I was delighted to leave with this t-shirt for only $5. Our next stop took us just another block up Old San Carlos Boulevard, where we were once again pulled in by the sound of live music. We found the musicians here to be talented and the drinks to be reasonable, with several specialty cocktails for under $10 and beers from $4 to $5.25. One thing that really caught our eye in Wahoo Willys was the Hurricane Ian line, which showed the height of the floodwaters here during Ian, which appeared to be around 10 foot high. We just left the Wahoo Willys and we learned from our waiter there that they had pretty much the worst luck ever. They had their soft opening right before Hurricane Ian and were scheduled to have their grand opening right after. Now obviously that got significantly delayed but they are open now and it's definitely our type of place because they have a huge tiki bar, they have live music and reasonably priced drinks but I'm thinking the place we're heading next is going to be right up our alley as well. Our Sunday evening dinner destination took us just across Matanzas Pass, where at 702 Fisherman's Wharf, you'll find Benita Bill's Waterfront Cafe. Now, when we were deciding where to eat for dinner, Skylar showed me one thing on the menu and I told him, I don't need to see anything else, let's go. We soon found that Bonita Bills offers everything we had hoped for, a laid back atmosphere, inexpensive food and drinks, and seating right on the water. So Ian relocated this boat to the deck of Bonita Mills, and they decided to just roll with it, which is another reason we already love this place. After browsing through the menu, Skylar went to the bar to place our food order and came back with a little more than I expected. Well, since it's the last stop of the day and Jamie's going to be driving home, I decided to indulge a little bit. The first is a $2 Jello shot, a $3 Miller Lite draft, and a $4 bottle of Bush Light. While we waited on our food, Skylar made some new friends who were on a boat not too far from our table. Hey guys, what are you doing? Guarding the boat. Doing a good job, aren't you? Our food order came out in no time and included hot wings and the blackened fish sandwich with onion rings. The wings were good, as was the sandwich, but what we enjoyed the most were the onion rings, which had just the right amount of batter and were fried to crispy perfection. They came highly recommended. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, after spending the last two days on Fort Myers Beach, I think it would be really easy just to focus on the devastation that is still clearly there. But what really stood out to us was how resilient the community is and how determined they are to recover after the storm. Nearly all of the buildings on the island sustained severe damage from the storm. As far as the businesses, some of them have rebuilt and reopened, but a lot of them are still operating out of food trucks and trailers with hopes of reopening in the future. And everyone we talked to genuinely seemed grateful for anyone who is willing to visit the island to support the community. So we hope this episode shows you how far they've come and helps you make the most of your time on the island. While the waterfront views at Bonita Bills were really nice, we couldn't resist heading back out to the beach for one final Fort Myers Beach sunset. We arrived back at the pier to find a decent crowd out on the beach, and while this sunset wasn't quite as vibrant as the one from the night prior, it was still a beautiful way to end another great day on Fort Myers Beach. And while we would have loved to take in a little more of the island nightlife, we'd have to be up early the next morning to explore the neighboring islands of Sanibel and Captiva. And if you'd like to see the condition of those islands, including six different beaches, then go ahead and click here right now. Thanks for watching.